is often said of St. Thomas Aquinas by theologians who want to downplay, as it were, our knowledge of God, that they remind us always that at the end of St. Thomas's life, he described all of his vast and voluminous works on theology as nothing more than straw. And that is true in comparison with the beatific vision. It is true in comparison to being a participant in the way in which God knows himself and not simply in a merely human mode. But it is also true that if I had no fire and thus I had no light, I would welcome very greatly a bit of straw by which to see. And thus do I say in some ways it is the most honest mass because with to some degree our capacity for lighting up the world at night it has led us into the fallacy that we actually see things. We see very very little and thus it is that it not only sets a mood, but it reveals the truth. That you and I are groping about, reaching out, as it were, to find him, to touch the face of God and his mysteries. It was said of St. Thomas that every single day he offered Holy Mass, and every day right after his Holy Mass, he would assist at another, even, health permitting, serving that Holy Mass. Can you imagine? And it was said of him that at the second Mass in particular, needing to hold himself together during the first one, that he was consistently consumed by devotion such that he would weep almost uncontrollably. Now, it was once said by the great Archbishop Augustine de Noia that we, hearing things like that, look for means of evasion. We say to ourselves, well, that's just typical saintly behavior. Or that, well, it makes sense for St. Thomas to do that, having such a penetrating intellect, seeing so much further and more clearly than I do. But rather than give in to such evasions, he once said, we should ask ourselves the question, what am I missing? Why do I not see what he sees? Why am I not affected the way Aquinas was affected? Think even further of what happened, what must have happened to that most perfect intellect that would make the intellect of St. Thomas genuflect. And that is to say, the mind of the Blessed Virgin Mary untouched, untainted by sin. And thus, when the angel comes to her and speaks such portentous words, and she receives them into herself, the meaning behind those words, not knowing, obviously, the full extent of what those words entail, most certainly having a bit of firelight by which to see, but not the full light of the divine truth that was about to take place in her, nevertheless striking her with sufficient light to be able to fill her whole being and penetrate her. What must have been her reaction when the angel departed? all that we know, 
is that she went in haste to Elizabeth. We have no idea what happened between his departure and her haste. What happened inside of her when that light of truth descended upon her like dewdrop from heaven? If St. Thomas was consumed by watching and assisting at a holy mass, what must it have been for her who didn't have simply signs and symbols leading to a reality. You and I, by means of so many shadows, nevertheless having the true, absolute presence of Jesus Christ and his incarnate humanity at every single Holy Mass, but pressed upon her intellect, pressed upon her senses, and pressed upon her womb. What must have been that moment before contemplation changed to action and she went in haste? Consider it just for a moment. We have nowhere to go. We have nothing to do. We have only to adore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.